Hello guys, I am Liviu and welcome back to my channel. I have been waiting a long time to bring you this review of the new FetchArk HDO2s but unfortunately DHL in my country sucks big time and because of that my package was held up in customs for 3 weeks before they released it. I have just returned from a flight session using the HDO2s so that I can give you an uh, honest and fair opinion about them. I am uh, most definitely sure that most of you have already seen other reviews out there. This is my take on uh, the goggles, but before I will go into what I think about them, I will tell you my short history when uh, it comes to goggles. These are my first ever FPV goggles, which I bought like seven years ago or something like that. Uh, these are the first goggles FetchArk released. They had 46 field of view, taking into the consideration that uh, these were the first goggles FetchArk released. 46 field of view was amazing and I've used these goggles for a long time. Three years ago uh, I switched to other goggles, which I will show you just in a second. And because I got used to from the beginning to use 46 field of view, I tried to find the HDO2s, but unfortunately I couldn't find them right then and they were kind of expensive. So I managed to find a pair of HD1s which have 45 field of view, so very close to what I was using and I have been very 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 happy with the HD1s. But obviously now I have received from Fetcher the HD2s which have 46 field of view. I don't know why everybody is saying that uh, they have the same field of view like Orcas because uh, Orcas have 44 if I'm not mistaken and these are 46. I can assure you they are 46 because I can see the difference between uh, HD1 and HDO2s. These are the pre-production um, run because uh, they don't have the FetchArk logo printed on the front of the goggles but nothing else is changed, everything is the same and because they are using a new type of optical arrangement and this is why they have uh, changed the case a little bit. The fan now sits on the goggles case, it doesn't sit on the faceplate the faceplate is still detachable. They come with these neoprene inserts on the sides. I tried to take them off, but I feel more comfortable using them inside. At first you think that uh, this side are uh, pressing on your uh, head, but after a while it gets uh, very um, comfortable. So yeah. A lot of people said that their eyelashes are touching the screens. I didn't felt that. Also a friend of mine that was present uh, when I flew them also didn't um, felt eyelashes touching the, um, the screens. The optics actually. If you have been uh, on the moon lately and didn't know it by now, FetchArk HDO2 has something uh, new on the FetchArk lineup. They have IPD adjustment like we used to, but also we have a focus adjustment so that you can uh, focus each eye perfectly and have a clear image. And we also have the power button, which everybody was asking about. I'm not particularly happy with the position of the button, and also I have been so used to using the barrel connection to power on and power off the goggles. So I am not using this. You can change the mode of the power button if you take this uh, cover out and you have a jumper there. Everything is inside the manual for the HDO2. So I will not go into those details. On uh, this side we have the HDMI, the audio output I guess and the on off button for the receiver module. On this side we have the power and the AV in out connection. So this is the great picture of the new HDO2s from FetchArk. Of course you have the DVR inside which appears to be the same uh, DVR from HDO2s to present 
Uh, I'm not sure if the actual PCB is different or not, but I think it should be different. At least this is what I'm thinking. They have a USB on uh, one port here, which suggests that you can uh, change firmware inside the HDO2 for different uh, options in the future, I guess. And a very big addition compared to other goggles from Fetchark uh, is a menu where you can change the contrast, the saturation, the brightness, the display uh, power. And that's very good for um, actually tuning your image for your own preference. So let's talk now about image quality because that's what recommends these goggles. The image quality has that wow effect when you put them on. It's very vibrant and um, have a lot of pop and uh, details in the image. I was really surprised by the image quality. I was not expecting it actually. Here is a little uh, clip of uh, a GoPro stuck inside the lens so that you can make an idea of how it looks inside. Obviously, looking at the recording from a GoPro stuck on the lens is not the same thing like actually flying with the goggles, but you can uh, make an idea. I have to say I have flown with many goggles, including DJI. The image quality in HDO2 is over DJI without a question, but obviously you cannot compare analog to digital signal. I'm not a fan of um, digital right now. I don't know if I will ever switch to digital, maybe in some years, if the latency goes down a bit and uh, the range improves. It's very hard to review a uh, goggle because everybody is different. Everybody has uh, their expectation. Everybody has different eyes, different uh, face type and so on. And so it's very hard to say something that will be generally available for everybody. I can say 100% that the image quality is the best I have seen in a pair of goggles. What I don't like about them, or at least it bothers me a little bit, and I will show you right now, is this section here, where this uh, leather thing meets the faceplate. I can feel this section on my nose, not in a disturbing way, but I can feel a little bit here. It's subjective. My friend, which was uh, with me when I was flying, said he didn't felt anything, so yeah. Maybe I have a big nose, <laughs> who knows. I guess I can cut this thing here and make room for my big nose, but uh, hey. But other than that, actually, I have nothing bad to say about them. I will uh, change my uh, daily driver to the HDO2s because I'm really impressed by the quality of the image. And I guess that that's the most important thing when we are flying. By the way, I'm using the TBS Fusion without the power cable and it works like a charm. So no power mod needed for using with Fusion. These are my initial thoughts and the feelings about the HDO2s. I will come after a mount or so and make another video telling you how one mount with the HDO2s went. Thank you very much for watching and uh, guys, go fly! no matter what goggles you wear. Thank you very much and uh, until the next time, bye.